Okay. <clears throat> Hello, we are going to work on lesson two seven this morning, and it is all about it says following the bouncing ball, but we're not actually doing any of those um, examples. We're going to jump to the application section on page 235, <clears throat> and we are going to do a big example of um, modeling for exponential. Okay, so you're going to get your Desmos open. And we're going to continue learning about exponential growth and the y-intercept starting value and the growth rate and the growth factor and all of those things so that you can <clears throat> put it all together with your worksheets. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And a reminder that I will not be having a live class on Thursday, um, except for those that want to come and get help. Um, or do a little bit of lesson 2.8. 2.8 is kind of putting everything all together where we have a data set and we're basically just learning how to choose between linear and exponential. Um, <clears throat> so super fun. So here on 2.7, it says, we have this function 81.15 times 1.013 to the X can be used to model the population of the U.S. and millions of people based on the number of years since 1900. So Stephen did guess that the population is growing exponentially, which this does show that. Identify the variables and the parameters in this equation and describe what the significance of each is in terms of population. <clears throat> okay, so um, variables are going to be X and Y. So we don't have a lot of room to write here. X is years. Since 1900. And Y is population <clears throat> and then the parameters, that's our A and that's our B. So let's just write parameters um, A is 81.15, it's our starting. Um, population. It's also what we call our y intercept. So we've been talking about y intercept <clears throat> since the beginning of lesson two one, really two two. Um, and then our other parameter is b, and that's our growth factor. It's our multiplier. Um, And in our case, it's 1.013. <clears throat> Jeez, excuse me. So when our growth factor is bigger than one, it tells us that it's growing because it's bigger than one. It's more than 100%, right? Multiplying by more than 100% each time. When it's less than one, we found out in the last lesson, two, six, that it's a decay. Um, so those are our parameters. We're going to learn more about this 1.013 thing here in a minute. So it says use the function in question one to complete the table, then use the table to draw a graph, which we can actually do all in Desmos. So let's go to Desmos and type in our equation. So if y equals 81.5. Times 1.013 parentheses to the x. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, on that one, I'm going to click and go to my gear and make the table. So, my table, I want to have zero. I'm just going to go over the negative two and negative one because we don't need any negative values. I'm going to copy over and do zero, 20, and I'm going to arrow down so it just replaces them. 60, 80, and 100. And I certainly can't see it on the scaling that they currently have. So I'm going to hit my magnifying glass and it puts it on a scale. And we can definitely visually see that it's um, an increasing exponential function. Okay. 
turned it off. Let me turn it on. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to type it again. So y equals um, and 81, oops, 1.15, oh, 81.15 times 1.15. So my blue one is the one that I can grab and I can, I can use a slider on with my left mouth. <clears throat> my left mouse. So I'm going to fill in my table um, with information from the table that Desmos generated. So 105.07, point oh six and 295.28. <clears throat> and then we have the graph, of course. <clears throat> Everybody with me so far? Yep. Okay. So number three says, so I'm going to go back to my paper so everybody can follow along. So we filled in the table. We already have the graph on Desmos. <clears throat> Number three says the function f of x that we have here illustrates blank growth. The population was growing by blank each year. So it illustrates exponential growth. And it says the population was growing by what percent each year? So let's see if anybody can figure that out. What we know so far. Is it 1.3 percent? <clears throat> I would agree. Can anybody tell me the other two see if they know how Stephen got to 1.3 percent? Um, so our growth factor, so if we want to find the percent percent change well, we said relative change. We're going to take B and subtract one. B is our multiplier. So we're going to take 1.013 and subtract one, and we get 0.013. That's our relative change. And turned into a percent, it's 1.3%. Okay, so number four says the model used in question one to three was obtained using official data from every census, census from 1900 to 2010. And a census is where now they send it in the mail or whatever, and they ask you to answer questions about your household or people used to kind of canvas and go door to door. Um, but it's not very accurate because, you know, there's a fair amount of people that say they don't want to answer the questions and we don't have to as citizens, you do not have to answer this, the census if you don't want to. Um, but it says use your model to predict the population 2015. Let's do that first. So to predict the um, population 2015, what year would that be that I'm putting into my function here? Um, 115. Okay, and how did we get that? Uh, 2015 minus 1900. Okay, so 2015 minus 1900 is 115 a year. So F is 115. So we can do this a number of ways, but if you want to go to Desmos, <clears throat> and you can actually just go to your table and type a new X that says 115, and it should tell you that they're predicting approximately 358.4 million people. Okay, everybody see how I found that? So you can do that with your table, you could do it with your mouse scrolling on your graph. We learned lots of different ways in um, the last lesson. 
How about I just go and do that so that everybody is feeling comfortable. So I just made a new row here in my table. That's one way. Um, you could also say when x equals 115, um, and then it gives you the intersection over here. And it looks like y is 358, just like we thought. OK, so let's flip the page. Number five says, what do you think your answer to question four say about population growth in the 21st century? I'd say it's, what do you all say? Looking at the graph, looking at the values. 1900, we had 81 million, they said here. Um, and now we have 100, just over 100 years of it, we have 358 million is what they're predicting. So I would say significant growth. Okay. <clears throat> Number six says, what if we use only um, more recent data. Since the census is conducted only every 10 years, we'll have to use a different source. Um, in here, they use uh, estimates from a site called Worldometers, which are based on multiple data sources that are likely to make more than um, make them more accurate than the census. In fact, the census is historically not the best measure of the true population for a wide variety of reasons. The table has data for years from 1900, or I'm sorry, 1990 to 2010, so more recent. Use, this, use the data to find the exponential function of best fit. Include five digits and all parameters. Okay. So just like we did with linear modeling, <clears throat> um, our exponential function of best fit, when we did with linear, we did the line of best fit. We had to use years after a base here because 1990 would be way too big on our scale. So we said take um, 1990 as our base year. So this is our zero year. And then we took 1995 and subtracted 1990 and got five for my <coughs> years after 1990. 2000, we took 2000, subtracted 1990, and we got 10. Okay, so we're going to go in and make a table in Desmos, and this is going to be our X1, and this is going to be our Y1. Okay, and before we do that, I want to write how to get the model to get an exponential model we're going to do y1 in the tilde again and we're going to say a parentheses b parentheses to the x1 so make sure you have the y1 and x1 or else it won't know where to go find the data once we put our data in the table um, <clears throat> also there's going to be a box that's a little bit different. Um, we didn't have this with the linear and exponential. There's a box called log mode. Make sure you hit check, check that box um, to get the R equals, that correlation coefficient. We, to get that to show up, we have to check the log mode box. And remember from linear, that correlation coefficient tells us how well our model fits our data. Okay, so let's go to Desmos. I'm going to wait a minute for you to get that copied down. <clears throat> and then we're going to go to Desmos and um, put our data in. So 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20. Share my Desmos screen now. We're going to enter the, oops, data that we have from our table. Okay. <clears throat> now, does everybody see that we've got, I've, at least on mine, I've got these five green dots, and then I've got this model here. 
<clears throat> and why should we not be looking at our old model that we had previously up here compared to this new data? Why should we not be looking at those on the same scale? Um, they go by different year sets, like one goes by 20 and the other one goes by five. Yes. So, <clears throat> um, and not just that, but over here, the one that we had previously started in 1900 was the base year. So this zero point right here was meaning that I'm circling was 1900. But this zero point is 1990. So I'm not going to get rid of what we did before. I'm just going to go up and click on that. And so there's no color in it in the table up here anymore. And notice that um, that model went away. And then I'm going to go click on the blue one. So that equation goes away. That line goes away. And now we just have the data that we just entered. And I'm going to hit my magnifying glass to zoom that in. And then I've got those a little bit bigger. <clears throat> now. Here it looks linear, but that's just because of the way we're looking at it. So let's go down in um, the next line here and let's type in our model, the Y1. So Y1 tilde. Remember that tilde symbol is to the left of your one key on your keyboard. And then A parentheses, B parentheses, raise that to the exponent of X1. And Notice that I have to hit the log mode box because right now my R does not show up and it, it corrects that. So let's make sure everybody got what I got on their screen. Everybody with me? Okay, Stephen gave me a thumbs up. Any questions so far? Okay, Shelby gave me a thumbs up. Okay, so um, let's just write down, it says number seven says base, just on the base of the exponential in your function, do you think this equation is likely to give a better estimate? So <clears throat> let's, under number seven, I'm gonna actually fill in my A that we got here in Desmos and my B. Um, so I'm gonna do a share so we can all see my paper here. Okay, so. The model that we came up with was A, which is 255.06 times B, which is 1.0104 to the X. And then we're gonna say, do we think based on the base? So this is our, this is the base that they're talking about which is our growth factor. <clears throat> so do we think it's gonna be a better predictor or not as good? Um. Based on the correlation coefficient, it looks like it will be pretty good. Oh, okay. I like that. So based on the R, so the R is 0 0.9987. So a good fit there. I would agree. And <clears throat> okay. Um, oh. You know what, I think we, one thing I missed back on question number four is it asked us then find the population of the United States in 2015 and compare. So this was our predicted, right, from the model. Let's just write predicted from model. So let's go 
<laughs> I mean, if we search it, I can tell you what I came up with and I searched it the other day. So when I searched it the other day, it said the actual population in 2015 was 320.88 million. So our model over predicted, right? So at some point, our, um, the US stopped growing quite as fast as what they predicted. Um, because at 2015, we over predicted by about 38 million. So that's where they're asking here. Um, specifically the base, do you think that that's going to be a better predictor? So when we looked at the percent um, change from the original model, we said that it was a 1.3% increase every year. And this right here, the percent change, we can take B and subtract one. So 1.0104 1 subtract one, we get 0 0.0104 or only 1.04% gross, gross. So it's a little bit slower growth, right? This was 1.3% growth and this is only 1.04. So yes because growth is slightly smaller. Oh, I can't get it all on there. Okay. It says use your function from question six to estimate the population in 2015 and 2050 compared to the 2015 estimate um, to the population already found on the internet, then search for a site it does population projections and see how your prediction compares. What does the comparison say about the site's population growth forecast? So let's look at 2015. So, um, <clears throat> so new model predicted. Let's see what our new model predicts. So new model in Desmos. <clears throat> so 2015, my new model, 2015 is gonna be year 25, right? X25, because I'm gonna take 2015 and subtract 1990. So um, what's nice is down below at the very bottom, even if your scaling isn't set up correct, I am gonna hit my um, magnifying glass and that still did not change anything. But at the bottom, it will faintly give you your X value so you can kind of see where that's at. So um, we're looking for X is 25. It looks like it's right there. At 330.04 million. 330.04 million. So 330.04 million. And the actual 2015 from the other side, we said was 320.88. So we were a little high, but much closer than the original. Back to my paper here for a minute. So we were only 10 million off before we were, what do we say, 38 million off. So much closer this time. So let's see, what does our predicted say? Our predicted for 2050. So 2050 minus 1990 is going to be x equal to 60 in our model. So our predicted for 2050. I'm just going to do a line in Desmos that says x equal to 60. It's easier that way. And I'm going to move it 
and then click on it. So I'll show you. Show me. So I did a line x equal to 60. I clicked on it and it gave me the intersection here. So it looks like um, at 60 years, so in 2050, we're predicting 473.4 million. 473.4. 473.4 million people. Mm -hmm. And we need to find a website um, that pop does population projections. So I'm going to go to search and say, Population projection. <clears throat> the, um, so let's just do for US. Um, right here, population projection. So for 2050, oh, this is the older adult population. Let's see if it has anything else. It's not giving us what we want. So, Let's see, Pew Research is usually pretty reliable. Um, population, so they say right here, because this is just US population, it's not like a certain age group, it says um, 2050 is about 438. 438 million. So, um, it, it's definitely slowing down even more because we we slowed it down using this current model right down to 1.04 percent growth, and there we're and now with that model we're still over projecting what the the models on that they're using in the World Wide Web are projecting. So. The biggest takeaway here is when you're working with exponential data and you want to do a model, you have to use this modeling method, y1 tilde a times b to the x1, and make sure you click on the log mode box for your r. That's important. Does anybody want to get out any of the worksheets? Questions on those? Okay. We had a question on the 2.5 worksheet, number 4B. Let's just share my screen here so everybody gets a chance to see this. This is worksheet 2.5. <clears throat> um, and Stephen said the growth factor is 0.89. That is true. And so how do we find the growth rate if that's our growth factor? So B is 0.89. So growth rate, growth decay rate is also the percent um, change, right? <clears throat> so in the lesson we just did in 2.7 and in 2.6, I gave you a little formula. Can anybody find that?
was it the growth factor minus one? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so our percent change using the growth factor, once we know that, it's going to be the growth factor B subtracting one. So if we take 0.89 and subtract one, it feels weird, but we get what? Um, negative 11, point 11. Mm -hmm. Which is a negative 11%. <clears throat> and then I want you to interpret. So remember on the interpret, I'm always looking for who, what, when, and where, and all that with regard to this models of the value of your character X years. And also don't forget that one strategy could be to go to Desmos and type in your equation to verify that that makes sense. Because if you're like, wow, I'm not sure I should have gotten a negative, you could type in y equals 10,000 times 0 0.89x. And then you can do the gear to make a table and then hit the magnifying glass. And sure enough, it does look like it's decreasing. So <clears throat> that would kind of verify for you, validate that, that would make sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm.